and welcome to the episode 364 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. For our penultimate episode, we have two early gigs, two variety shows, and one recording session. Let's delve in! On the 30th of December 1961, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, sharing the bill with the White Eagle Jazz Band. One year later, in 1962, we get more West Germany action. The Beatles, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, performed at the Star Club in Hamburg for their final residency in town. And here come the two variety shows. On the 30th of December 1963, the fifth night of the Beatles' Christmas show was featured at the Astoria Cinema, London. Earlier in the day, the Beatles publisher Dick James treated them with a lunch at the Café Royale restaurant in Regent Street. One year later, in 1964, the Fabs were featured in the fifth night of the Another Beatles Christmas Show at the Audion Cinema in Hammersmith, London. Let's not break with the tradition and allow me to place my call to action. If you got something out of What A Fab Day, be fab and visit www.simonmas.com support to find out how you can help me to grow this community and how you can support my quest to create more and better music-related content for you to enjoy. Of course, you can do nothing at all and I would still be grateful for your attention, but you wouldn't be as fab if you keep all the love for yourself. Thank you. Let's close the episode with the 30th of December 1966 recording session that saw the Beatles busy at the EMI Studios from 7 pm to 3 am. During the session, Paul McCartney, unhappy with the mix of When I'm 64 completed by producer George Martin on the previous day, see episode 363 for that, asked for a remix, sped up so that the key was raised by a semitone. This meant that the tapes ran about 6% faster than they did when the basic track had been recorded and the final result was shorter than the original. After that, two mono mixes of Strawberry Fields Forever were copied on a separate tape for America, quote unquote, to be shipped over to Capitol Records for release on the North American market. Finally, Penny Lane was reduced onto another take, freeing space for more overdubs. Time was not wasted, and vocal overdubs by Paul and John were added to the new take, take 7. This time, the tapes were made running a bit slower, so that the vocal performances sounded faster and higher when played at normal speed. Before the end of the session, a rough mono mix of Penny Lane was made, so that the Beatles could bring an estate of the work at home to listen to it. Tomorrow we'll talk about a refusal and a lawsuit. It will be our final episode of What A Fab Day, so I hope you'll all join for the occasion. That's tomorrow, though. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.